Welcome back to part 5 of how do I manage my online business with AppSheet. So in this case, we are going into a little bit more details on the UX, which is the user interface, and trying to do six different uh, slides of the data. So in this case, what the meaning of a slide is a part of the data, I think it's quite straightforward. So as per the previous, previous video, we have four main stages in the sales, and that four actually represent into two uh, two more extra stages, which is new order, which is order that came in but have not been dealt with. So nobody has checked it and we don't see what happens and we cannot confirm that it is a real order yet. So pending confirmation, of course, is the first step on our stages previously. Pending payments, the second. Pending delivery is the third. Uh, pending close means that uh, we need to make sure it has been delivered. So in this case, I think it's named something differently over there. And lastly, it's close. So close means that we have all four of them checked and the, the stock have already reached the customers and we don't have to look at it anymore. So we still need this to monitor that how much that we have sold over the past month, over the past year, and you know what is the total revenue that we have over a certain period of time. So we'll try to attempt to uh, calculate our previous data set, which is overview, sales and status, into all six of this. Okay, so actually this is not in progress. Is everything else okay so let's go back to our data set so our sales actually look somewhat like this so we have tried to enter two data just now so how does this table looks like it will have a sales key which contains the date the total amount the name of the customer as well as their email as well as the individual stage they're in so in this case uh, Ben has confirmed the order but he has not paid however Jackson has confirmed and paid but our lolly driver has not sent out the, the stock for delivery and so on and so forth. So let's go back to our app. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is how to operate slices and really some basics in, uh, uh, actually the Google Sheet function is very similar to what we're gonna do over here. So if you go from the table just now to uh, two tabs down, we call slices. So for, for the first slices, actually let's go to our new order, which is order that is uh, here, but not here. Make sense? So we need to calculate any order that is here, but it's not in here. So we can actually do a very simple trick, which is see their confirmed order, or uh, is it empty? So if it's empty, yeah, most likely nobody have entered anything yet. So let's go to a new order. So the, the overall situation is very straightforward. Like the, the concept is what we did just now. So what we do is use two functions over here. First one is, is it blank? Is it blank? They'll give a yes. If it's not blank, they'll give a no. Very straightforward. So the second, uh, uh, what is that called? The seventh function is called lookup table. Lookup table, I'm not too sure it's here. Yeah. So lookup table will match a value to another table and match the column and return a value. So this is exactly the same way that we calculate the total prices of a sales just now. So in this case, I'm looking up sales key within uh, this table. We're, look, we're looking through this sales key, okay? through sorry uh yeah through the sales data sorry yeah yeah okay let, let me rephrase it so we are looking at prop two so what we do over here is that we're looking at the sales key uh in this case yeah it, it doesn't show because it's a feature column so we are looking at the sales key and we are retrieving another sales key from sales status here okay so status here so we are compared with this is our original table. So the equivalent will be, so I can't really do a sales key over here. The equivalent will be a VLOOKUP in this, uh, uh, so confirm. So in this case, the equivalent will be a VLOOKUP of let's say uh, one of this, and we look through this one, and we try to, try to retrieve the second column in this case. So of course it's gonna show an error here, but you, you get the concept if you're familiar with Google Sheets. So this is what exactly it does. So if it exists, we stop blank, so we throw it away. And if it doesn't exist, it's a blank, we go it in. So we include the one that's blank. So in this case, we is blank, yes, include. That's kind of the concept, okay? So anything that is doesn't have a confirm order entry is gonna include into our new order. So we can actually do the same with the others. So let's go to our uh, second step, which is uh, pending. So once you put a true, they are, they are in pay, pending payment. Okay, let's go to the pending payment over here, which is second one, which is payment equals to no, straightforward enough. So you can see that in new order just now, I'm using PROC2 as the original calculation source of table. 
and pending payment, the source table will be from sales status. So in this case, I'm looking at this table where if payment equals to no, include it. That's it. You know, don't need to care about the rest. If it's a payment is no, include in this table. So of course, it will be the same with pending delivery, which is not yet delivered, uh, not out for delivery yet, as well as the pending close, which is uh, is deli in delivery but not yet closed. So in this case, everything that is not delivered will be under here so that you know that how many do you need to close uh, by let's say a three days, two days timeline and so on. So the other two is, one is overall in progress, slightly more called complicated is that uh, everything that are uh, already uh, key into the second part, but none of it is yes. So in this case, someone has put a status in, but the status is completely no. So it, it it gives an idea of, you know, uh, this is still in progress, but it has not confirmed. So someone have picked up, someone have looked at the new orders and has not confirmed. So this is the second stages of the overall. So this is what we call overall in progress, but has no status yet. Okay, you see the importance later. And the last one is yes, which is have everything equals to confirm. So we should do this so that it's easier to understand. So all four of them equals to a yes, Look at this and command here. So if all four of them, yes, include them. If they are not, do not include them. That, that's basically the, the I think the, the the equation that I use here are fairly straightforward, but there's a lot more things that you can actually do. So I, I'm not going to go deep into that because it's very hard to troubleshoot if you go too hard the first time. Okay, so now we have six different slices over here. We need to structure them into six different things that we want to do. Okay, so let's go back to our UX. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is new order. Fairly straightforward. Go to new order, get a table that you can also get a deck. So in this case, let's look at our new order. So this is our sixth new order over here. It shouldn't be six. Something is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deleted the data. I think, yeah. So we actually, so let's just, I think they're, they're not sync yet. So because there's no data for the other one, they are not synced properly from the last time. Okay, so while they're syncing, we can actually see. So for new order, we are using a table. So you can see that our overall sales has about six, while new order has about four because uh, two of them. So we have overall six different sales, but we already uh, put two in our current category of, yeah, this is the current thing that we're working on basically. So we have four of them that are still under new order and we might want to just so how do you shift something from the new order uh, down under other road? Just go in here, uh, add here and say that uh, not confirmed yet. So yeah, so I've saved it. So yeah, I have already looked at it. It's fine. Let's go to the next order. So the next order maybe, uh, yeah, maybe good. So the next one maybe, yeah, still okay. So, so yeah, fine. So we have one more. Do we have any new more order? Yeah, we have one more. So maybe this is the one we don't want. So we want to kill. So if we actually want to kill this uh, Haro, Haro, so we might actually need to go over here and actually kill Haro over here. So we do not want this entry. So this will remove it from the from the app because maybe the person is either a, a non-customer or just it's something that you don't want. So it will be better if you can have something like a rejected order. So what you could do is just go into your thing and call another order called uh, fake order and just kick it out of the of the situation. So I'm not going to do that over here. We're just going to go down a simple road, which is delete them directly from the data sheet where that we have. Oh no, sorry. You have to delete it from for response here. Otherwise it doesn't get calculated. So it disappeared. So if you go back, the that would actually just disappear from the app if you don't want. So of course you can also go to form and edit form and go to response over here and just go to individual and go to Harod, which is the person here and just delete responses. So this will remove the responses directly from your Google form and you do not need to look at it again. Okay, so repeat order of course will give an error. So you will, you will be able to do the same thing. So now we set all the new order. So everything is what we call in progress. So if we go to in progress over here so we have five customer in progress, and this is all the status they're currently in. So I did not label it one, two, three, four, five because it'd be too long. And I think it's conceptually, you should be able to grasp uh, what is this stage. So now um, Cole maybe directly have come to the doorstep, pay the money, 
and just take the thing and leave. So if you just say, yep, and we're all done. So this is four o'clock on the 5th of May, save, done. Okay, so we can go back to our new order, done. So payment, we need three, so we don't care. So you can see in pending close, we still have a few. But in this case, the, the thing that the code just now that we have done is go to close and we never look at it again. So now let's go for our scenario over here. So uh, an order came in, you go to new order and you click, uh, yeah, add a status and then you go to the second stage, which is pending payment. So if you are a person that chased for payment, this is the tree you need to go into. So let's say Ben and Miao Min has paid. So you just go in, uh, yeah, they've confirmed and they've paid. How about the other one, which is uh, Ben? So Ben has paid as well. So I'm going to go Ben has paid and your job is done basically. Oh, sorry. So your, your job is basically done here. So let's go to our second stage, which is our lorry driver. So our lorry driver will look at pending delivery and say one, two, three needs to deliver. So they'll take one, two, three, put on the lorry and then they go here and say, uh, yes, I want this to deliver. I want to deliver this. Uh, and the second one, I also want to deliver this. And we also want to go for the third one, which is we want to deliver this as well. So in this case, you move everything out for delivery. And it depends on the, the situation of the day. Maybe, maybe one of them is not at home. So maybe Melman is not at home. So I can only deliver two a day. So as a lorry driver myself, once I deliver a uh, band over here, I'll just, yeah, band has been delivered. Perfect. So Jackson has been delivered as well. Perfect. So. So the, the, the elegance of this is that one person only need to look at their own uh, page and your mindset will be very clear of if I'm looking at pending payment, I'm trying to collect money. I'm looking at pen delivery is at the morning, which one should go up. And if I'm pending close is that what I need to deliver and what do I need to finish up basically today. Okay, so the, the other thing is uh, is actually the map of new order. So I didn't think this worked because there's no more new order, obviously. But we have showed that last quarter. Uh, last time you should be able to, to grab that. So close is because we have closed three things. Uh, overall sales lock is still all five of them. And overall in progress is there's two of them in progress. And if tomorrow morning, this might be the target that I'm looking at and how do I do. So let's go through a whole uh, situation again. Let's say we send a form. So how do you send a form to your customer? You just press send and this will actually give you a shortened URL. So you can attach this in the hyperlink. You can do a bitly in there. Right? So there's many ways you can email this link to people. There's a lot of way to, for you to, to get a link out. But what the customer will see is this. So let's just go in, go through one. So let's say I'm a customer and I put my email address in. My name is Yoon. Okay, so what's your phone number? My phone number is this. Not a real phone number, obviously, and I'm from Sango. My postcode, I don't know my most code, but zero zero. So let's go to Google Map and let's just find something in Sango and see if we can get some actual addresses that can be mapped. So let's go to Google Map and let's find something in Sango. Okay, so Sango will be here. So let's go to uh, here, shall we? So let's go to Makota Churras. Okay, so we, let's find some place to go. So this is Pasar Bangi Sungai Long. So let's just copy the address and we want to send it over here. Okay, so we here, so that we four three zero zero zero. And I want the first quantity 15. Second one, I don't really want. Uh, the third one, I want three. Okay, let's say this is the order. So once the customer submit their order, uh, in the app, let's go to here. So in the app, you will go into, let's just uh, sync it first so that the order came in. So what I'll suggest is that you check the app every half an hour because uh, it's, it's just, if it's, if it's, you are just looking at the app every day, it's kind of destructive anyway. So you see, so this is came in. So you can look at the sales key over here. This is the total cost of the price. This is the person of the uh, name of the customer. This is the email of the customer. This is exactly what time the, the order came in. There's the name, phone number, uh, postcode. I don't know why it's changed the time again. I'll fix that later. Uh, this is the addresses exactly. And this is the item, item and total prices. Okay. So you can also see that on the map over here. So in a new order, you can actually see this is the new order I need to work with. Where exactly is it and what's the prices? So should I proceed? So do you think this is fake or this is real? So if this is real, you go in and maybe go and call the customer or something and 
yeah, this is my real order. Okay, done. So save it. So this will actually make it into a pending payment. So of course, the second person will send the, um, what is that called? The, the company bank account over where, yeah, so the person paid very fast. Perfect. Done. So the lorry driver look at it. There's two yes. I'm going to take this to my lorry. Yes. And I'm going to drive over. Once I drive over, I've delivered my, my, my parcel to them. They have signed. It's a yes. I'm done. So if I refresh this again, we will, we will have the, the sales order slowly go through the stages and eventually uh, end up in here. So if you go to close, you'll see that Yoon has been closed. So the last updated is for uh, 718. So that's a very good, yeah, this is not updated on, so the, the sales is closed at this exact date, basically. Okay, so uh, you can also go to overall in progress. There's two more that I have to worry. There's overall sales that I have and overall close that I have. And yeah, one last one. Okay, so one last one is the dashboard. So the problem is that if you have to keep on having to switch around, 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 it's kind of difficult. So what they do is that a dashboard will be able to concarnate a few of them into one. So in this case, I'm trying to, so how do you add a dashboard? You just add new view, go here, go to uh, what we call a dashboarding. Okay, so in dashboarding, uh, this again. <laughs> okay, never click on it. It's, uh, it's a nightmare to, it's a nightmare to, to figure this out. Okay, so let's just refresh this page because I cannot do anything else when I already click on onboarding. I have to finish it, isn't it? Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, this is kind of stupid. Come on, app sheet developer, do something about it. Okay, so let's go to our dashboard. So how does a dashboard looks like is that if you click dashboarding, it will give you something called a view entry. So what you do is just uh, from all this, which is the different view that you have generated just now, just choose one that you want, which is here is new order, uh, overall in progress and close. So if I go to dashboarding, I'll see there's a new order, which great, we have no new order. So over progress, we have two. So this two that we worry about and we have close uh, four order historically. So of course you can again filter it by using the slices of, uh, if I want to see the closest last week or last seven days, you can do that in the slices as well. So that's quite easy to do. Okay, so that's basically the, the basic of the whole app. We're going to go through one last round uh, in the next video and we're going to close everything up. So see you in the next one. Bye.